Hey guys, it's Jaden Clark here from Jazz Lesson Videos and today I'm going to be talking about simple jazz hacks that work so well. When creating phrases, it's easy to be overwhelmed with the amount of different scales, changes, and devices that we encounter when playing over jazz standards. So what can we do to simplify this? So we're going to look at six simple phrases, what makes them so effective and how we can apply these sorts of hacks to our improvisation. We're going to analyze everything from short phrases, long phrases, pentatonic phrases, and plenty more. These phrases can be found in the Easy Licks combo package and this features two great resources written by Chad LB. Major 251s, minor 251s and many more kinds of phrases are covered in this package and most importantly, this is the kind of resources that players of all levels can really benefit from. To download this resource or any of the individual PDF packages that are included, feel free to click the link below. So the first simple phrase that we're going to look at is a short major 251 phrase. And there's the hack itself, starting short. You can start with short phrases, short simple phrases. It can be over a major 251, it can be modal, it can be over any particular set of chord changes. If you start with short, simple ideas, this can provide you with a great platform to then go ahead and further build a melodic solo. So with that, let's take a listen to what this phrase sounds like. Okay, so a few things we notice straight off the bat. It is fully diatonic, meaning that we are only using scale notes. Now, of course, diatonic phrases, in my opinion, can be some of the most melodic phrases using only notes from the chord scales, and that's exactly what's going on here. Getting into the actual scale degrees here now and why a short simple phrase like this sounds so good. As we can see, we start on the sixth of the two chord, the D minor seven, and this sort of leads in nicely to the minor seven, and of course from there we move to the fifth and then the ninth, and then we're able to land on the root note of that five chord there on beat three of that first measure. From there, of course, we move down to the flat seven, of course, the nine, the four, this leads up nicely to the third. So it ends up resolving nicely to the third of the one chord, and then you sort of tie it in a bow using that five, and then back to the one. Now already, hopefully, we can see how effective a phrase like this really is with a few chord tones, a few scale notes, we're able to perfectly highlight a major 2-5-1 that's actually moving by pretty quickly. But you're going to see short 2-5-1s like this in tunes like the Rhythm Changes, for example. It's played all the time. So just having simple language, right, starting off with short phrases, when we learn harmony like this is going to be super, super beneficial. So the next phrase we're going to check out, of course, is going to be a longer major 2-5-1. And what we are going to notice with this is that we are sticking to that theme of playing diatonic. So let's just jump straight into this. We're going to take a listen to this phrase and then we'll check it out after we hear it. So let's check out what this phrase is doing here. As we can see, the first measure is using virtually all chord tones. So we start from the fifth, move up to the seven, back to the fifth. And as you can see, we descend down that arpeggio until we get down to the fifth, an octave below. And then we move up to the seven once again, and before landing on the ninth, the ninth is going to lead nicely into the fifth of that five chord. That five chord also moves down the arpeggio. You see five, three, one, seven, and we move down to the sixth, and then we land back on the seventh, and then from there, we're going to lead nicely into the seventh of the one chord, and of course, then we tie it off, we sort of put a bow on it 
with the five and then the third there towards the end. Now that brings me to the next hack. As we can see with this particular phrase, we are using mostly chord tones, right? We're, we're not even using many of the other chord scale notes to resolve to chord tones and we're not even using them to really fill in the gaps. This phrase is mostly built off of the arpeggio notes and it is always totally fine to build ideas out of arpeggio notes. If anything, they are going to be the most inside of the harmony you can get, and it's going to allow you to outline the harmony in the strongest way possible. So the next phrase we're going to check out now is a minor two, five, one phrase. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into this. We'll have a listen and then we'll check out the phrase afterwards. So as we can see, our harmonic rhythm, that is where the chords are placed and for how long each chord lasts, the harmonic rhythm here is slightly different to our last long major 2-5-1 phrase. If anything, this looks a little more like the short major 2-5-1 phrase, except we're using the minor 2-5-1, but we are leading into this with the one minor chord beforehand. You see that in bar one, you've got the 2-5 in bar two, and then you resolve back to the one in bar three. So let's just jump straight into this here once again, using more of the chord scale notes here. And we've also got a little bit of embellishment happening here as well. And we'll get into a little bit as to why simple embellishment can be a great hack for improving your phrases. So let's take a closer look at this here now. Of course, we start on the ninth here of the one chord, move up to the third before descending down that arpeggio once again. Once again, the arpeggio coming in strong, we then move up to the seventh, the fifth, and we end up nicely diatonically enclosing the fifth of that two chord there. Even that two chord, we actually move down the arpeggio as well. You can see with that F, the fifth, followed by the third, followed by the root, followed by the seven. Now, of course, once we get to B3, we switch to the five chord, and there we have this nice triplet embellishment. Now, these triplets can creep up on us a little bit. They can look much harder than they actually are. A lot of the time you're going to actually find that embellishments are simply extensions of stuff that we already know. That is, look at this embellishment here. Now, it's just that E7 arpeggio, or part of that E7 arpeggio, just squashed together in one beat. And that is how I like to think of them. A lot of the time if we embellish stuff, it's just going to be an arpeggio that's squashed together. If we add a little turn or something like that, it's just going to be scale notes or it might be an enclosure or something like that. But as long as we have practiced the actual device, whether it be an enclosure, whether it be an arpeggio, you're going to find that embellishing or embellishing those enclosures, embellishing those arpeggios are going to be much easier. So as we can see, we use that embellishment. We move up to the flat nine. Now, of course, this is just an extension of the arpeggio, so we can still consider this to be completely diatonic. But of course that next note, that D sharp, that's a chromatic note. So we've got, we've got our chromatic note there, we end up chromatically enclosing the fifth of that one chord before then resolving to the third. So a little bit more going on here with that minor two, five, one, but of course simple embellishments are always going to sound really, really great. And if you use something that you already know, like an arpeggio, you can hopefully a little easier add embellishments to your phrases. So we've looked at different phrases and covered a few different hacks for both major and minor two, five, ones. So now let's dive into simple ways that we can approach one chord vamps. Remember that you can find deep dives on all of these concepts that we've covered so far and more in Chad LB's Easy Licks combo package. Having a resource like this will mean you can practice and refine these concepts by continually adding phrases to your vocabulary. Okay, jumping straight into the next phrase, and in fact our next hack, use the blues scale. Use the blues scale, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using the blues scale. If anything, it's the scale that most listeners will know, right? It's going to be a sound that is familiar to most listeners. So let's look at a simple phrase using only notes from the blues scale. We can hear it here now. So before I jump into this phrase, just a very, very quick refresher on the blues scale. It is a minor pentatonic scale with an added flat five. So if we're thinking of the scale notes, we're starting from the one. We've got the flat three or the minor third, then we have the four, the flat five, the five, the seven, 
And then there's your minor blues scale. So with that, let's check out this phrase a little more closely now. We start on the root note, and of course that is on the and of one. So already adding a little bit of tension there. So we start on that root note, we move up to the third, the fourth. So we're simply ascending up the blues scale here before we get to beat one of the second measure. We're sort of anchored by that flat five. This is really, really nice when you, when you slam that flat five on a strong beat like that. We've got a little 16th note embellishment, simply just descending down the blues scale once again to the seventh. We skip up to the third there on beat three. And then the final few notes is just minor pentatonic, right? We From that third, we go four, five, four. We've got that offbeat there, the third, and then of course resolving to the one. Of course, super simple, using only notes from the blues scale, but already we hear how effective that is and how groovy it sounds, right? The blues scale is pretty much almost always going to sound good. So it's a great, great tool to have in your arsenal of improvisation tools. Okay, so I mentioned the pentatonic scale very briefly when using our minor blues scale. But of course, a great hack for building phrases is simply just using the pentatonic scale. Now, that can be both the major pentatonic or the minor pentatonic. Of course, minor pentatonic much more involved with the minor blues scale, of course. So now we're going to look at a phrase built using the major pentatonic and we can hear how effective that sound really is. So let's check out a phrase here now. Okay, so a quick refresh on the major pentatonic. Of course, the scale degrees are as follows. We've got the one, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. Super simple to remember and super effective having a couple of little skips there to create that pentatonic scale. So now that we've had a refresher of our pentatonic scale, let's go ahead and jump into this phrase here now. So we start on the root note here of the C major. Of course, we're using a one chord vamp, a major one chord vamp. So on the root note, we go one, two, three, back to the root, and then to our six, we've got that nice little offbeat rest to then lead into the next measure. So we lead into the next measure with the third, we land on the fifth, sixth, third, five. So then there we've got three, two, and then we lead to one on beat one of bar three. From there we're going one, two, three, two. Got that little offbeat rest there, and then of course six, one to resolve the phrase. Of course what I've gone, I've just gone ahead and numbered every single note there. But of course we're just trying to see how this phrase is put together using the major pentatonic scale. So of course, even though I'm only covering the major pentatonic scale here, you can put together just as great phrases using the minor pentatonic scale. And if anything, you'll hear a lot of the minor pentatonic scale being used over minor vamps, just to put together simple phrases, create simple motifs, just like we've done there with that major pentatonic phrase. A super, super simple hack and a great way to start building phrases. Okay, so the final phrase we're going to check out here is going to be a melodic chromaticism phrase. And that is also our final hack, adding a little bit of chromaticism, right? If we're comfortable using chord tones, if we're comfortable adding in a couple of scale notes, if we're comfortable playing embellishments, we're also comfortable playing the minor blues, the major pentatonic, even the minor pentatonic, we can start to add a little bit of chromaticism here in the gaps. And that's exactly what we're going to do with this particular phrase here now. So let's go ahead and hear it. So as we can see, we're using a minor vamp for this. So let's go ahead and jump into this phrase. Of course, starting on the roots there, we're moving down to the major seven. Now, I like to think of this as a chromatic passing tone or a chromatic, the correct term would be chromatic lower neighbor if you're more classically inclined, but a chromatic passing tone is kind of nice. We just drop down to the major seven, back up to the root, just passing through quite nicely. Of course, from there, we're just moving up the scale to the minor third. And then here's where we find our first enclosure. Now, of course, a really quick refresher on enclosures. An enclosure is just two or three notes wrapping around a target note, okay? So in this instance, as we can see, we've got two notes above, 
one note below. So we've got the B, the B flat, and then we have that G sharp. Of course, watch that that sharp is carried over. We've got the G sharp below that A. So two notes above, one note below. Both of them are wrapping that note, emphasizing that note, that A, if you will. So from there, we're on beat one of the second measure. We move up the scale once again, and then we're adding another chromatic passing tone, that D sharp, just passing through. We're passing through to the chord tone, that is E, and then we move up to the F, right? So, so this is sort of considered a non-diatonic note, that F. And what we're actually doing is we're actually chromatically enclosing. Once again, we're chromatically enclosing the E, right? That chord tone on the next measure. Now this enclosure I would consider to be a two note enclosure. You can see that chromatic note above. We just got one chromatic note above and then one chromatic note below. And these wrap around that E on beat one. So just in our final measure, of course, we can see another chromatic enclosure. This time we have two notes below and then one note above. Of course, we're targeting that C on beat three. So we get the A sharp, the B natural, two chromatic notes below the C natural. And then we have a D natural on top. Of course, you could put a C sharp there and make it fully chromatic. The D natural tends to sound pretty nice though as well. So both are melodic options and both are gonna sound really, really great and both are helping us target and highlight that third to resolve the phrase. By utilizing these simple hacks in our phrases, we are more easily able to come up with effective phrases. Effective phrases often happen to be simple phrases because this is what listeners can grab onto and remember. We can use simple phrases as building blocks for much more complex phrases and it's this process of building up our phrases that can make our solos much more melodic. To dive into these concepts and much more, be sure to click the link below to download Chad LB's Easy Licks combo package. Of course, be sure to click the like, the subscribe, and the bell button so you always know when we're releasing new content. And as always, feel free to let us know what you'd like us to cover next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.